Younger generations are hoping for a more livable future, but uncertain of what that looks like without more aggressive action. Mari Kopney is here today. She's been fighting for environmental justice since she was eight. This is her story. My name is Mari Kopney. Most people know me as Little Miss Flynn, even though I'm not so little anymore. At eight years old, I became an activist when my city was faced with one of the worst water crises in American history, and none of the adults in charge seemed to be fixing it. My entire community, including thousands of children, were exposed to toxic drinking water, and eight and a half years later, Flint is still not fixed. Even worse, water crises plague hundreds of cities across America. At 15 years old, I should be focusing on school, cheerleading, and just being a normal kid. Instead, I've spent over half of my life fighting for the most basic human right, access to clean, safe drinking water. That is why I continue to advocate for those who are facing environmental crises. Good to see you again, kiddo. It's good to see you. I met you in Flint when you were eight years old. <laughs> I can't vote yet, but my generation is going to be impacted by the climate crisis more than any other generation before us. What message do you have for the people who vote without the youth or greater good in mind? The message I sent was I was able to pass $360 billion, billion, to make sure that we start to deal with climate crisis. And in the infrastructure bill, it's confusing, in the, in the bill we passed for a trillion, $200 billion to fix our infrastructure, we're going to make sure that every single lead pipe in America is, is out. Good. We're going to pay to have a new one put in, and all those hundreds of thousands of homes. And what happened with you guys was, your city decided in Flint, instead of going from the, taking the water from a lake into the treatment plant, they took it from the Flint River, which was polluted. It was polluted. And that then corroded the pipes and things, everything went to the devil from that point on. And by the way, all of those pipes are gone except you have 16% left in your state. And we're still, we're paying to make sure every single solitary lead pipe is done. No child should have to turn on the water in a fountain in the school and or at home and worry about whether or not she, they're ingesting lead. And there are even more chemicals that are more dangerous than that, those forever chemicals. And they're in things like the foam used to clean runways and the like. And what we're doing is changing that as well. They're not going to be able to use those chemicals. And we have to have different chemicals that are going to be able to do the same job. And so the biggest thing is, though, that we have to change what we are, those things that are, affect the environment. Because if we don't get it straight in the next, by 2050, if we go 1.5 degrees higher in, in, in temperature, we're going to be out of luck. There's nothing we can do to change what's going on. For example, Russia, just one example, they're in eight time zones. And all that permafrost around the Arctic Circle in that area, guess what? The permafrost is melting. It will never freeze again. You know what's coming out? Methane, which is four times, four times as dangerous as CO2. Look what's happening, not only in Flint, but cities all across America, all across America in terms of clean water. And the sewer systems, the sewer systems that are getting damaged to fix them, I mean, the, the, the sewer treatment facilities that are being damaged have to be replaced. They're technology that's 40, 50, 60 years old. Not much has been done. But it costs billions of dollars to do it. So that's why it was necessary to pass legislation both in both bills that probably total a total of $500 billion to be spent now, now, to make sure your generation doesn't go through more flints. And so that's, they're the things, there's much more to talk about, but because of people like you, young people like you, insisting this change take place, if you weren't out there hollering, I wouldn't be able to get any of this passed because people are listening. And by the way, I talked about the young vote to begin with. It's not, you now you're a very young vote and you're way ahead of your time. You're kind of a, uh, a progeny, uh, you know, that many, anyway. but all kidding aside, the, the greatest concern and the greatest help that I get for my environmental stands are from 
young people, because you get it. You get what's happening. So there's a lot we can do. And by the way, we should be cleaning up the Great Lakes overall. Great Lakes are the single greatest source of water in the world as one, one source. Seriously, did you know that? More fresh water, drinking water in the Great Lakes than anywhere in the world. And we rely heavily on it. But we're everything from, for example, the fuel used in those, those boats that, transmit, that transfer material up and down the Great Lakes. Well, guess what? They're polluting the lakes. Not all of them, but they're, 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 they're pollutants. The, for example, the cement that we make now, to lay down the cement, you can change it and reduce the, the environment, reduce the harm in the environment because making that cement causes a significant pollution of the, of, of the air. And so we're changing the way we make cement, the way we make steel. We can make steel better now without having the negative impacts on the environmental impacts by the way we make the steel. So, and what we're trying to do is once we get that done, I'm sorry, I feel, the way we get this done is it's not sufficient that just the United States takes care of this. We have to help other countries take care of it as well because it affects, it's, it's, you know, it's one atmosphere. It all goes in the one atmosphere. And so what we're doing as well is we're rewarding farmers, for example, to plant crops that absorb carbon from the air that absorb it, that suck it out of the air. For example, the Amazon down in Brazil and other parts of South America, that absorbs that's great, what they call a great carbon sink. It absorbs more carbon and pollution out of the atmosphere than is emitted by every single bit of negative thing we do in America on a daily basis. And so, but guess what? We cut down all our forests. We did all these things to, to be economically viable. Now they're coming along saying, how about us? How about us? So we have to, the industrialized world has to not only clean up our act, but we've got to help these countries do what they need to do without further hurting the environment. And we have to pay them, in my view. We have to compensate them for what they're doing. And so there's a whole lot of things that we're doing. Last thing, I'll give you an example. You know, all the electricity that's in here is transmitted over there's a, there's a power station and that either burns coal or natural gas uh, or oil in order to make, make, generate the energy and it goes up on those big high tension wires and transmit it to wherever it needs to go. Well, guess what? Because of the research we did starting in the, in the administration, the last one I served in, the Obama administration, the last one didn't do much, didn't do anything actually. Um, what happened was that we made sure that we invested in how you can make solar cheaper and make sure that wind energy is a lot cheaper. And so, but what happened was it found out that people, even though we were able to do it much cheaper than a coal, than, you know, putting coal in the fireplace to generate the energy, to generate the electricity, it's a lot cheaper now to use wind and solar than it is to use oil or or, or coal. But what happened was you got to be able to make sure you transmit it over those lines to get it places. But no one, not in my neighborhood, no one wants a new high tension stand going up in their neighborhood. Or they don't want windmills that they can see. And President Trump was wrong. Windmills don't cause cancer. And, uh, and, but here, I'll give you an example. I was in, in, uh, in uh, Ohio. And they have an experimental place that's federal. You know, the blade of a windmill, you know, the, the, there's three blades in a windmill. They now make them 104 yards long, bigger than, longer than a football field. Longer than a football, and they generate enormous power, enormous power. So what I've done is I've said, you can't dig an oil well in certain parts off our shores in the Atlantic or in the Gulf, but you can put up these windmills. And I was up in New England where the last major coal-fired plant, they use coal to generate electricity. And guess what? They want to go to wind or to solar energy, and they want to do it. But what they, now what we're doing is, okay, we're going to transfer what you're doing here, and you're going to use wind or solar, and we're going to use the same high-tension wires to transmit the energy. 
And so we're going to be able to clean the environment significantly, significantly. And, and one last thing, battery technology. One of the things, you're, you're, you're not going to be driving a gas-powered automobile. You're going to be driving an a, 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 a automobile that is an electric automobile. And that's because we had in the backyard out here of the White House, we had all the three manufacturers come, the three major American manufacturers, and they all committed they're going to go electric by 2035. That's going to reduce exponentially, exponentially, the impact on the environment. So there's a lot of progress being made because folks like you hollered when you're eight years old and now you're 29, I know, but I'm joking. But <laughs> now you're getting up there. But this is what we're going to do, and it's exciting. And the last thing I'll say is it's going to be generate enormous economic growth. Remember, you, may, you won't remember, kiddo, or you may, you're so f f informed, but when I was running, they said, why isn't Biden talking about his, his green plan now? This is in the beginning. Because I wanted to make sure every labor union supported me, because they were all opposed to it. Until I sat down talking with the IBEW, the electric union, or br br the Brotherhood of Electric Workers. And I pointed out, their future lies in going electric. So, for example, we're going to make sure that, you, have, you know, we have gas stations on interstates now? Well, guess what? There's going to be electric recharging stations. We're going to have 500,000 of them. F I mean, 55,000 of them are going to be put in. And now, I I'm, I'm sorry, I get too excited. <laughs> it's okay. I do want to make sure that she gets her second question in. Oh, let's do your second question. <laughs> oh, okay. Um... There are countless communities in America dealing with toxic drinking water. Government solutions can take several years, if not decades, to implement, even though lead exposure leads to long-term irreversible damage, especially to children under five. That's why I hope to develop my filter that provides immediate relief to those families dealing with toxic water. What can be done to support short-term, immediate solutions for the millions of Americans dealing with toxic drinking water? Two things. One, if it's immediate, you mean that we find out tomorrow that there's this problem. We have to provide bottled water. That's a start. I mean, not because you can't fix these pipes that go all the way back to the water station and go to toxic rivers, etc. immediately. But as I said, out in Flint, all but 17% of all those, just since I've been in all those, all those lead pipes, they're out. They're out. They're gone now. But you have 17% left. Now, granted, it's not 100%, but we're working diligently to get them all done. But not only across America, we're providing billions of dollars to do this directly to not just the state, but to the locality. So, for example, Flint would get the money directly to be able to get this done. They don't have to wait. Well, you got a great governor who's pushing this really hard. Anyway, there are certain things that take time to change, and because it's the physical requirement of having to dig things up and put something new down. In the meantime, whatever is needed to assure that the water in your school your, or your home is clean, if you can't make sure that it is clean by getting the pipe changed immediately, you got to provide the literal, the water. You got to provide bottled water. Thank you so much, Mari, for your questions and for advocating for a better future. Now, before we wrap up, I would like to take this moment to thank all our six guests for being here, your questions, and for continuing these conversations on your platforms. And thank you, Mr. President, for welcoming us into the White House and taking the time to have a conversation around these issues that are top of mind for many young voters. Any final words? Every issue you've raised here is of enormous consequence. Enormous consequence. As I said, this is the United States of America. If we don't lead in every one of these areas, every one of them, we're not going to be what the rest of the world expects of us. As much as it sounds sort of uh, bragging about America, the rest of the world looks to us. We have the largest economy in the world. We have the most diverse population and a democracy in the world. And it's critical that we are able to do what we need to do, not only to make life better here, 
everything from transgender to the prison system to an environment to education to access to health care. It's not only critical that we do it for us, but the rest of the world's looking at us and saying, if we can do it, the United States, as big as we are, and as consequential as we are, then we can make it happen around the world. And that's, that's my goal. My goal is when I leave this job, people say, he kept his word to say he did what he said he would do. And each of the areas you've all raised, prison reform, transgender, making sure we eliminate assault weapons, among other things in terms of a danger, making sure the environment's clean, making sure education is affordable, and making sure that docs have the, all the training they need to deal with all the health issues relating to women.